Hey everyone, welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel. My name is Adam Hancock and today we are talking seven Florida cities very possibly headed for the next housing crash. Key indicators, these could be strong candidates for this kind of issue. I'm gonna run through the study and why that matters. We're gonna run through the cities. I think there's gonna be a couple surprises on here for you because they were there was for me. And then just to play devil's advocate and not be a doom and gloom guy, I'm going to give you possible alternatives to satiate the need based on likability, feasibility, and everything in between. If you're hot on one of these current cities, let's hop right in. All right, so last couple years in real estate, needless to say has been quite insane. Florida has had a very interesting go at it, at the very least as of late, and I came across an article this week that I thought was quite interesting. So the gentleman basically took a delinquent mortgages, he took the 200 biggest cities in Florida, and delinquent mortgages was factor number one, 30 to 90 days, so one to three months. Factor number two was um, delinquent mortgages past 90 days, so these people are past three months in delinquency, so struggling. Then factors three and four were homeowner and rental vacancy. So he took these four indicators combined and which are you know, gonna really relate to uh, fragile equity positions, people clearly struggling to pay for their current properties, um, less demand and things sitting idle, et cetera. Went through several rounds of this, weighting them different at different rounds, and whittled this entire list down to just seven. And I'm gonna talk about these seven. Now I think what's interesting here is if, if you believe the methodology, then there is patterns here, there's locations that really pop out, there's some surprising locations, but there's also some interesting insights you can glean off of the economics of the study itself on going the other direction of you know still relocating to Florida, but being smarter about it. So without further ado, let's hop right in. All right, number seven on the list, Pembroke Pines, Florida. We're gonna work our way from seven to one, and one's gonna be our most likely for a crash. Pembroke Pines, Florida is located just above Miami and just below Fort Lauderdale. So you're on the southeast coast of Florida. Uh, you're also the fourth most populous city in the entire Miami greater metro. And stats wise, homeowner vacancy was the least on this list in particular. Now, perspective of the whole list, these are very likely to crash, but of this list, it had the least vacancy. There's still some demand there. Um, this is a popular place to live in Florida. It's a popular relocation destination, very close to the water, very close to major metros that people are attracted to. Uh, percent of mortgages delinquent over 90 days. This was number one on the entire list. So there's definitely some struggle there, um, but number seven is Pembroke Pines. All right, number six on the list is Hollywood, Florida. So you're gonna really see some themes here. Hollywood, Florida out of, of 200 cities is located just nine miles from our number seven on the list, Pembroke Pines. And it's nine miles is directly parallel. So this actually gets you closer to the water. Because of that, Hollywood is really known for its beaches mainly. And it's, it's, they're unique. It's almost like a, Hollywood Beach is almost like a throwback. It feels a little bit more vintage. And um, it's been ranked as one of the best beaches in the entire state for families because of its docile nature. Homeowner vacancy rate and what landed on the list, this was almost, it was more than a half a percentage point above number seven on the list as more, more uh, vacant. So you're gonna see a lot less demand coming into this area than of recent history. And percentage of mortgages delinquent um, over 30 days and over 90 were both significant. All right, number five on our list is Jacksonville, Florida. So we're staying on the East Coast here, but we're heading way north. You know, this is almost just about in Georgia. This is also a massive area. It's technically the largest city by area space um, in the contiguous United States. So needless to say, the largest in Florida. Here you have, um, you're gonna really start seeing vacancy rate hop. So the, the lack of demand and the more vacant um, homes and rental properties is gonna really be the driving weighted factor that uh, starts to get you from five to number one. Um, so you have more than a percentage point above our previous options on just vacancy rate alone. And uh, delinquent mortgages, not a pretty picture, but it's gonna be flat to the other locations as well. Pembroke Pines is the highest, the rest are you know pretty flat to each other. But Jacksonville, I think, is going to be, and, and as we go here to number one, a lot of the trend of areas that maybe took a boom and are in like a big check, um, maybe boomed a little too hard, a little too fast, and maybe on something that was economically fragile um, related to jobs or the potential work from home that didn't come to fruition or something like that, that you're gonna see went maybe three years too fast and is gonna need a check. All right, number four on the list, we're heading back down southeast and we are talking Miami, Florida itself. So 
three of the four already on this list sitting in a very close radius to each other. Vacancy delinquency rate is now going to be the highest on the list thus far. And percent of mortgages delinquent, we're still having a heavy factor here. But Miami has always been a little bit of an enigma in its rise of price and the melting pot of the um, demographic that is in Miami has this big divide on um, you know parts of the area that money just doesn't matter or doesn't relate to the economics of the city itself because the money's coming in from outside areas. So it doesn't really relate to people that have jobs that support that level of property and that kind of thing. Plus it rose so hard and so fast over, you know, maybe comparable cities like a Tampa or a Jacksonville in price where when people now look at potentially an exit or getting priced out or something like that, the, the cities that are kind of would be the comparable cities like a Tampa becomes really in vogue because it just seems like the price is so advantageous without seeing huge advantages to maybe staying in Miami versus just having a similar city in a different metro. But number four is Miami. All right, number three on the list is interesting. It's Gainesville, Florida. So most people, if you're not really familiar, Gainesville, Florida is, you know, the claim to fame is the University of Florida. You know, that's how everybody kind of thinks of it. And locationally, it's pretty far north in the state, but it's not coastal. So it's above Ocala and it's almost directly north if you don't count the panhandle. So it's really central. The panhandle would shoot over, Jacksonville would be the other direction. This one's straight up. You know, homeowner vacancy rate in Gainesville for this list was almost a point and a half above number four on the list. And number four on the list was like two points above the previous. So you have almost a three percentage point, over three percentage points higher than the first one I named, which is interesting because Gainesville wouldn't be your first thought when you think of this list. You know it's big, but it's not your first thought. So the only thing I can like theorize about that without having like, I guess, hard data on it would be, you know, the indication of the college and the weird last couple of years. So if, if the college scene changed and with, you know, rental vacancy related to students living there, um, people exiting the city and uh, doing school remotely or work remotely, I could see that escalating really, really quickly in data that would be driven from this kind of census study. Um, but number three, Gainesville uh, is a, was a surprising layer to me. All right, we're almost there. Number two on the list is Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So we're back southeast, so obviously not a great showing for our southern Florida folks. Um, Fort Lauderdale is just as coastal as Miami. I'm just broad geography wise, but basically just 30 miles above it. It's known for its beaches, it's known for its boating, you know, it's restaurant scene, there's a lot going on there. Highest homeowner vacancy rate up to this point on the list at almost 4.1% of total vacancy. So you're seeing a real big demand shift in uh, South Florida and uh, delinquent mortgages are sitting at above a half a point on average. And let's get to our final one on the list, number one. Orlando, Florida, number one. Uh, this was surprising to me. This would not have been my first guest. You know, I, I thought about it a bit and you know, it's interesting. So you're in central Florida here and Orlando, I would have thought in a lot of capacities, you know, it's affordability, it's suburb nature, it has a ton of different suburbs. If you park like the celebrations and Kissimmee's and Walt Disney area of the world, you know, there's a lot of layers that are very suburban, very family friendly, a lot more affordable than some of the Southwest Florida options. But it might be the it might be the um, the oddball in a larger city conversation. So with a lot of the changes in the last couple of years, with you know the reasons people needed to be in big cities, like you know parts of Chicago and these areas where you you were in the metro because of school, because of work, and then you lived on the fringes because of affordability or better homes and not being in the city, or if you took out if you took out the need to be in the region. Be, like work is remote now, or school's remote or something like that, then Orlando could be uh, too much for you. It could be not coastal enough for you. And then like I had mentioned, people exiting like maybe Miami or Jacksonville or, or like Manhattan, San Francisco. And Tampa might be the preferred destination being a little bit more coastal. It's not as crazy feeling as Orlando. It's close to Sarasota and all those beaches. So I feel like that one really boosted, and, and this one might be the odd man out. And you see that in the homeowner vacancy rate at 5%, highest one on the list, um, almost five percentage points above number seven on the list. Delinquent mortgages actually were the lowest on this list in totality. Um, you did have a lot of affordability in that area overall. Um, they're doing a lot better at not having people be foreclosed upon in this kind of market. But number one, Orlando on the Florida, I thought was uh, unique. And now let's talk about something maybe more refreshing and let's talk some alternatives of what I would do if these cities I thought I liked and now I don't like. 
Okay, now on to some possible alternatives. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of just doom and gloom content on YouTube where, you know, the world's crashing and Florida is gonna be a disaster and then there's no possible way to go from here. So, you know, I think there's always alternatives. And the fact of the matter is, is studies are saying that 25% of people that want to move, want to leave the current metro they're in. And more than half of the top 10 list of where they want to go is still the state of Florida. So we need to look at actually solving this issue. And I have some thoughts, you know, opinion based, but they are my thoughts. So more than half of the list I just went through is in South Florida. So let's start there. So Pembroke Pines. Pembroke Pines, as a couple schools of thought, a couple ways to look at this, is one go to Lee and Collier County. This would be the uh, Naples, Fort Myers, Greater Metro. The way I would relate Pembroke Pines being similar there actually has a myriad of benefits by going to Southwest Florida at the moment because of what they're doing. And one of those areas would be go just to simply go east. Alva and Lehigh Acres, but Alva notably, east of the midpoint of like Northern Naples and South Fort Myers. Um, is where a lot of the new construction is happening, a ton of affordability, and you hug an adjacent area that um, has all of the Naples beaches, all of the Fort Myers beaches, and that entire lifestyle. But that's a big divide in price, similar to Miami, but a way more chill environment. But that part of Southwest Florida gets a lot of the cool things that exist in Miami because it is an alternative for people that don't want to be in the craziness. Another way to look at it would be if you're gonna to go to the, a little bit north of that, to the Sarasota, Florida Metro, you could look at Northport, would be similar to Pembroke Pines in my mind, and then even north of that, to the Tampa Metro, an alternative would be to go uh, maybe a Brandon, Valrico, Wamama, Riverview, something like that. But Southwest Florida, I think, could be an interesting alternative to Pembroke. If we talk Hollywood, which I mentioned is a lot more coastal than um, Pembroke, Hollywood's interesting, because it's kind of like Clearwater and Clearwater Beach. Hollywood versus Hollywood, Hollywood Beach, two different worlds very close to each other. You know, Hollywood's vibe is one, one thing you could do is you could stay on the Atlantic coast and you could go north. So you might want to look at like a Cocoa Beach, a Daytona, something like that. You could also go to Pinellas County in the St. Petersburg adjacent area. And it might be like more of like a treasure island kind of thing. And then even, you know, poor timing for this kind of comment. But um, North Fort Myers Beach could be interesting um, comparison for Hollywood as well. And then lastly, Miami, um, and you could group Fort, Fort Lauderdale in between of all of these, but Miami really, you know, it, the mini Manhattan of Florida, the only way, and there's many layers there, but the only way to really satiate any sort of jollies that you get from a Miami in the state of Florida would probably be the Tampa Bay Metro. You know, what they're doing, if you haven't checked out the Tampa Riverwalk and that, that area, you know, I was there the last 10 years, and they really are pushing a huge tech boom. It's becoming a solution for exits from San Francisco and Manhattan and downtown Chicago, where Naples, Sarasota, those areas are too slow or don't have enough work environment, not enough finance and banks and, and tech. So I think Tampa is their only shot at satiating that need where I'm not sure those people are seeking to go to Jacksonville. Okay, while talking about Jacksonville, we'll just stay with that. If you remember, Jacksonville was number five on this list. Now massive land area so just to group jacksonville on one list is a little misguided just because it's so big and there's so many layers a lot of people don't don't feel like jacksonville sounds that big if you've been there because the downtown's not like this massive place but people live there for different reasons so you have the work side of it and you have the bigger kind of feel of a city that people enjoy you have a very suburban flat platted area you have a north florida element so you go a couple ways with it, you know, it's gonna appear kind of random, but one, one avenue would be if you wanna stay north and you wanna stay on the Atlantic coast, you could go south of that. And like a Nocatee um, has the number one, Nocatee, St. Augustine, Ponte Vedra area, number one public school district with St. John's in the entire state of Florida. Nocatee is one of the most um, popular master plan communities in the entire state of Florida. It's far more affordable than like a Lakewood Ranch or something south of it. Um, but it would give you that suburban feel if that's why you're there. Another uh, interesting idea would be maybe to leave the state. I mean, that would be something to look at, you know. You could go to Charlotte, um, Raleigh, Durham, something like that. You could do a Savannah, Georgia if you're looking for something slower paced. And of course, you know, I keep coming back to Tampa, and this wouldn't be really saving cost. You know, Jacksonville actually, the affordability is there. Um, but if you wanna, if you wanna mix it up and you need the big city and you don't wanna leave the state, your really only options would probably be to go to Orlando or Tampa. Okay, on to Gainesville. Gainesville was number three on our list of the top seven. 
You know, Gainesville could be an enigma because it's why did people leave, you know, and if, if you're stuck on the premise that people no longer have to be there for school and they're, they're, they could live anywhere and they're working, or they're taking school at home, you know, a lot of people probably go back home. But what I would probably do is probably try to get more coastal potentially, you know, and that would be uh, the Pinellas County area or um, you could do like, you know, Western Bradenton um, above Sarasota or something like that if you could work from anywhere. You could also look at Lakeland. Lakeland's a good in-betweener of an Orlando and a Tampa, but a lot of like what the not crazy part of Gainesville would be around the college town uh, might have a similar of like an Orlando kind of suburb or central Florida suburb is one way to look at it. I mean, Orlando is a natural choice. You know, Orlando is number one on this list. Um, so obviously that doesn't sound like where people exited from Gainesville, but Orlando would be a natural choice as far as like being further south, but still having a central nature to it, not going all the way coastal. Um, but those would be a few maybe to look at. All right, and lastly, let's talk Orlando. Orlando, another you know big area, lots of suburbs. Central Florida in general has a lot of layers to it, you know, Kissimmee and all these areas. So Orlando, what I'd probably do is, you know, Tampa obviously it keeps recurring here, but it's just an it's it's maybe one of the it's maybe the best location in the entire state for a larger city that has layers. So you you could have city life, you could have beach life, you could have suburbs and all of that. And Southwest Florida is so coastal. And then you have Sarasota access as well. Uh, I think it's the best mousetrap as far as if you like the state of Florida and you want day trip ability potentially and, and you need to live one place, this is the best proximity to the whole state of what's really going on here. So that would be one way to look at it. You could go, you know, Orlando's very inland. So the inland part of Tampa Bay, like Wesley Chapel, and that area could be really interesting um, because it's really affordable compared to Tampa. It's, 30 minutes from it and it's really hopping right now and the negative to people from the area is that it's too far inland or it's too far north of town but Orlando's already in that game. Um, you could look at Lakeland as a more docile option uh, but that's probably what I would do if I was exiting Orlando is I'd probably go southwest Florida would be my natural choice. If you want to get really creative you could hit like a Tallahassee or I'm a big fan of the Panhandle. Um, it's just a matter of like it's, a, it's the opposite of what Orlando would offer as far as uh, industry but you could look at a Destin, um, even a Gulf Breeze I really like, or something like that, um, if you want to get really creative. But that's what I would say is um, some possible alternatives. All right, everyone, that is a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna throw a couple other videos right here for you to check out if you resonated with this one at all. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed any piece of this video. It really helps us out in the algorithm. And more importantly, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.